What an inspirational way to start a broadcast. Hi, everybody. I'm Soledad O'Brien, and welcome to American Graduate Day 2017. We're coming to you live from the Tisch WNET studios in Lincoln Center in New York. The music montage we opened with is set to a song called If You're Out There. It's by John Legend. You're going to hear more from him in just a few minutes and lots more from other luminaries as well. One of the lyrics in that song that is particularly appropriate for today's broadcast is Tomorrow's Starting Now. As always, today's program will celebrate all the people and organizations working to help students graduate high school on time. The graduation rate hovers around 83%, and it is the highest it's ever been. But today we're also going to talk about what happens to these young people the day after graduation. Because as John Legend sings, tomorrow's starting now. Please welcome to our program the president of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Patricia Harrison. And we're also thrilled to be joined by the president and CEO of Huntington Ingalls Industries, Mike Petters. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for having me. So take us back to the starting of American Graduate Day. What was the philosophy behind it? What did you want to accomplish? Six years ago, and first of all, I want to thank uh, stations like WNET and stations for Cookville, Tennessee, and Idaho, and Arizona. The concept was um, public media has a mission focused on education from the youngest child to all through high school, lifelong learning, we're knowledge providers. The important thing, we're based in the community, care about the community. This was a huge, huge crisis. One million American boys and girls not graduating every, every year. So whose responsibility is that? We convened. Uh, we worked with 1,700 partners and companies like Mike's. And I'm happy to say six years later, with a lot of good work and a lot of good organizations, as you said, Soledad, we now have reached this wonderful 83% uh, graduation rate. Which is rate. amazing, but... <laughs> but it's not but, it's and. It is and. We know how to make this work, thanks to General and uh, Mrs. Alma Powell, America's Promise Alliance, who, through their Grad Nation report, told us all a young person needs is at least one caring adult in their lives, a mentor, a champion. And that's who we are as Americans. Our DNA is volunteerism. And you can be a mentor and make a difference, and it'll make a difference in your life as well. Often when people talk about mentoring, they think about little kids and an adult helping them. A lot of this program is going to focus on mentoring people through a transition, you know, yes. out of high school and into a career. Why is a mentor so important at that pivot point? Because a mentor, it's not one size fits all. You could have someone who's retired. Uh, you can have a college student who's a mentor. You bring your life experiences, your intuition, but most of all, your commitment to say, I care about you as a person. And these kids are worth saving. They're worth caring about. They have grit. But like all of our own children, they need a little network of support. That's all they need. And it's going to make a big difference for our country. At your company, Huntington Ingalls Industries, which is one of the nation's largest military ship builders, right. You have a number of programs. We're going to talk in a little bit on this program about the Newport News Shipbuilding Apprentice School, which sounds amazing. Right. But I'm not going to talk about it now because we, we have a piece on it later. But tell me why these kinds of education focus programs are so important to your business. Well, the complexity of what we do is, requires us to be engaged in training our employees. And so when you show up at the gate of our business, you don't usually show up with a degree or certificate in shipbuilding per se. You, we need to make you into shipbuilders. And so uh, we have a variety of programs because we never, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Um, but we have a variety of programs across our entire business to help you become a much more productive member of our team. Often CEOs are watching the bottom line. And I could see someone saying, well, that's wonderful, but that costs money to do. Why is that a worthy investment? Well, in our view, it costs money not to do it. Hmm. And so... Um, and we've had, you know, being a government contractor, we get lots of audits and reviews. And time and time again, when, when, the, when the auditors show up and they say, we ought to just go cut some of that out, that ends up being the one thing. So you can cut a lot of stuff out. You can't cut that out. That's too important to your business. It's the backbone and the fabric of what we do. What kinds of changes have you seen in the years that this program has been on the air that bring together important partnerships, you know, government and business and nonprofits. 
I think, first of all, Soledad, it is the acknowledgement, because as public media has been doing this for six years, we've raised such awareness about how someone dropping out impacts your own family, impacts your community, our society. And leaders like Mike, I can't say enough for what corporate America is doing, and small business CEOs, and faith-based organizations. Together, as Americans, we're saying this is our responsibility, and in the end, it benefits everyone. So I see that huge change. The other change is the democratization of technology. We are all going to have to be lifelong learners. You don't just get to a place and say, I've achieved it, I've climbed my Everest, because there's another Everest in front of you. And these kids, really, what public media has been doing, preparing them before they even enter uh, preschool, getting ready to learn, getting them ready to be lifelong learners. But then we have to take the high school graduates where they are right now and say, you've got a lot going for you, but you do need training. Like, let me ask you about your employees, because they often serve as volunteers. Right. Have you found that you have to wrangle them into doing it, or do you feel that they are to, raising to, their hands to be part of this. To volunteer into mm -hmm. the And take community. part in, the, in um, the numerous programs that you run. Oh, no. I mean, actually, our system is such that if you want to do welding on our ship, you're going to go through our welding program. We're not just going to put you on the ship. What we do, though, along those lines is we engage in our state community um, workforce development projects. We're the largest employer in Mississippi and in Virginia. And so, as a result, we're engaged in that whole pipeline of, of training and development and workforce development from the governor's office mm -hmm. all the way down to our peers and docs. And, and to me, that's where we, the partnerships that we have with the, with the political system, the partnerships we have with, um, with WHRO in, yeah. in Norfolk, um, you know, that is all about trying to create an environment where folks are going to not only learn, they're going to love to learn, and they can be lifelong learners and be productive for us. In our last remaining seconds, would you encourage other business leaders to do what you've done? My view is that you get out of it what you put into it. If you just sit at the end of the pipeline and you wait for some, go some goodness to come out of it, you're liable to be disappointed. But if you invest in that pipeline and you, and you do what you need to do, you will be very happy with what you get out of it. Mike and Pat, thank you guys. Thank Thanks you. for kicking us off today. Really <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks for having us. And of course, thank you for all that you do every day. You guys have been doing this for a long time and it's greatly appreciated.